Hello there. Um, what I've been thinking about over the last couple of hours is about heaven. Um, I've been caused to think a lot about heaven since my son died about four years ago. And the reality of the fact that he passed from the earth into the presence of God and is enjoying himself in heaven um, feeds my imagination quite a lot. And that you begin to wonder what heaven is like. And of course, in heaven, there is no sickness, there is no pain, there is no sin. Everything is working as God wanted it to work. We pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And of course, in heaven, God's will is done perfectly all the time. Of course, on earth, God's will is not done because we only have to look into the world around us and realise that murders and terrorism and famine and distress and refugees and homelessness are all part of what it means to be without heaven. heaven in heaven, those things don't exist. Um, heaven is a place where everything is in balance and in order and... Um, not a dull, dry order. I often think about this, that the Bible says that with God, all things are possible. Now, I would love to live in a place where everything was possible and with no, no hindrances, no barriers. Um, you can see things happen as a result of faith and believing in God. Um, you see amazing things happen through faith. And so all things are possible on this earth. But there's a lot of work, a lot to work through in terms of a, um, our heart condition to see those things happen. But in heaven, there's no barriers, and all things are possible all the time. And so you can be on, in one place and just think yourself into another place, and you're in the other place. Um, and all the um, ramifications of that, and to dwell in a place like that, would be absolutely amazing and thoroughly exciting. Um, so to me, heaven is an exciting place. Um, and the prayer that we pray that our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And of course, the job that we Christians have is to access heaven through our um, our ability to um, enter the heavenly realms through the blood of Christ is to draw on what is in heaven and bring it down to earth, to see people transformed, to see communities transformed, to see the healing power of God at work. That is our job, bringing the kingdom of heaven down to earth. But there is some, God has an ultimate aim. God never intended the world to be as it is now. It was not his desire, his intent, and a lot of, a lot of the junk that goes on in life was never God's will. We need to be really clear about that. God is good. And the heavens and the earth, when he made them, he said again and again, it is good, it is good, it is good. The world still has the um, aura of that goodness as we look at beautiful countryside and the sea and things like that in the sunshine and we see the beauty of what God made and yet we know that under, underlying all that in the human hearts there is corruption of all kinds. Uh, uh, and that is not a negative statement, that is just a simple statement of fact. You only have to look at your newspaper, look at the television screen, and you're being bombarded by this day by day. God never intended it that way. God did not intend sickness. God did not intend any of these things. So none of these things are the will of God. The will of God is healing. The will of God is heaven. The will of God is to bring heaven back down to earth and the heaven and earth to be joined together in one and everything that is evil and opposed to love to be excluded from the earth again as heaven comes back in and they two come together. And the, the, the text uh, that I can base this all on really 
is in Ephesians um, chapter 1, verse 10, where it says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. There's a time coming that God has in his heart, and no one knows when that is, but it's God's intention to bring heaven and earth back together. And the whole um, matter of the exclusion of evil, the exclusion of everything opposed to his love, um, has got to be dealt with. And also the, the, the damage that has been sustained across the earth in, in human terms and in, in the, the environment, God wants to see all this restored. Um, ultimately, of course, he's going to produce a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells and everything will be uh, and the new creation that God ha uh, had in his heart when, he, uh, when Jesus died on the cross and was raised again, it, that new creation, he, he was the, the fountain of that new creation. And of course, when we are born again, we are made new creatures and we, we, we receive that inner nature of Christ in the spirit that is a heavenly nature. And the, the process of the Christian life is often the learning to yield to the, the, the Holy Spirit so that that nature can be ex, um, expressed through us and the acts and works of God be expressed through us in whatever form that is. The birth pangs are the traumas that are going across the face of the earth, the, 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 the traumas and the pain that we go through as, as the human race together, um, the, the, this is a process by which God is bringing his kingdom to birth. And that, that, that will, the, one of the main manifestations of that will be the return of Christ to this earth. Um, it moves on to the marriage supper of the Lamb and so on. But the thing that everything is heading up towards is the return of Christ to this earth as king. And God's choice of him to be king over this earth. And this is something we referred to in a previous session. And the idea of there being one man ruling the whole earth um, is something that we have to make a lot of adjustments to um, in our hearts and minds. And there would be many fears of having one man ruling us, um, except for the character of the man. In fact, the character of the man who we choose to rule over us or whose reign we submit to um, is a, a vital issue. I had it quoted to me many times in my youth, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So in the hearts and minds of many, to have one man ruling the whole show is um, tantamount to handing over to a dictator who will become progressively worse and worse. And there have been many examples of this in history. Um, so it's vital that we consider the nature of the one whom God has appointed to rule this earth. And that his name is Jesus Christ. Is he fit to do it? Is any man fit to have ultimate power and ultimate authority over this earth? And I think in the main, we would all cry out, no way. <laughs> But then we have to consider Jesus Christ. And for that, for the next stage of what I'm going to say, I want to turn to Revelation chapter 5, which is the, um, the place where Jesus assumes his authority. In chapter 4, John has been taken up in the Holy Spirit into the throne room of God. 
and he sees God seated on the throne. And there's so much in this chapter, so just briefly mentioned, is that the throne is like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And around the throne there were uh, four and twenty seats. Upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. This is the throne of God, and the, the whole chapter is talking about the what we call the beauty realm of God, the, the throne room of God is full of beauty and splendor um, and the worship of God as the creator of the heavens and the earth and the angels worshipping and praising him.